Welcome to Rift Force Studio. It's Neil today, and today we're going to be looking at something new. That is a first painting guide for Middle Earth strategy battle game. As you'll see in front of you, I've chosen to do Saruman the White, and this came about after I posted a Saruman model on foot on social media and had a lot of questions and comments related to it. Um, how long it took me and, and this sort of thing, it actually only took an hour, uh, and that seemed to uh, surprise people. And here is the ceremony in question. Um, and I figured that it would be a good idea to do a video just to demonstrate how easy it is to actually achieve that result uh, very, very quickly. And as it is to paint ceremony on the horseback, that's what I decided to do. So we may do some back reps for Middle Earth going forward. Um, we'll see. The studio have uh, delved quite hard into, into this game now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where we take this. Um, but here's Saruman with his horse. Uh, I'm going to start by painting um, the face and hair uh, before moving on to the cloak. Uh, I'm going to use a reductive technique with contrast paints. So this is a case of not just using pure contrast, but using contrast and then contrast medium to thin out the highlight area, giving you kind of a three, a three tone uh, shade and highlight rather than two tone you get with flat contrast paint. So the face and hands are going to be dark oak flesh and I'm going to apply liberally uh, the contrast medium with a clean brush uh, and wick that away from the highest point. As you can see from the Saruman model so far, I've done a pre-shade, which was literally just a Chaos Black spray and then a Tamiya White um, pre-shade with the airbrush. Um, this is necessary really to carry the effect. Uh, it doesn't, uh, this, it's also worth noting this doesn't actually work very well with things like um, Apothecary white and those light contrast paints. For those to work properly, you need to use a pure, uh, a pure white or grey, light grey base. But certainly for these kind of tones, we can use we can use to appreciate quite effectively. Uh, once that's done, we're going to use basilicum grey there, which you can see, um, and we're going to use that on the hair, the beard, uh, and uh, the eyebrows. Same technique, and then black templar will be used to do the staff, but we're going to begin with the face and the hands. So this is just neat dark oak flesh contrast at this stage. And then we have a clean brush with contrast medium, which we're going to use just to wick away the highest surface. It's always worth remembering too when doing these techniques, that's a good idea to do your darkest colours last as a general rule. Um, so I'm going to do the flesh and the hair and the robes and things like uh, the Black Templar contrast because it's hard to paint over with other contrast paints. We're going to do that last. But right now we're just going to work on the flesh areas. This technique works because the contrast paints have a very high pigmentation. Um, so... Uh, so by the time you get on with the contrast medium and you wick away the top layer, it's already stained the layer underneath, uh, almost almost like an ink. So that's why this technique works so well. And with the hands done, we're now going to move on to the face. It doesn't, seem ma uh, sorry, it doesn't matter so much if you catch the eyebrows and that sort of thing here. Um, 
but try and be as neat as you can in the face areas. Certainly don't get the hair. And try and avoid um, the main part of the moustache and beard. If you're careful as you apply the contrast, you should be fine. And then we apply the neat medium on the highest point there, which is where our light source is coming in, kind of diagonally down just from the right. I'm going to take that off the top of the face. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, we are going to reinforce these fleshy tones later with some thinned, um, thinned citadel layer paint, Kessler flesh or Cadian flesh tone. So now we're going to do basilicanium grey on the hair and the beard. Um, this works really, really well for a kind of dirty old man hair colour, actually. It's quite effective. And you'll see that in a second as I start to apply. It's very important when you rinse the brush, um, if you're using one brush for the contrast and the medium, uh, once you rinse the contrast paint off, make sure that brush is bone dry before you apply the medium, otherwise it changes the properties of the contrast paint and it can get pretty messy. I, do, I use two brushes, makes life a lot easier. Take the beards first, and let's apply our basilicone and grey. And now we apply a contrast medium. You can kind of just feather and blend this away as you go. It's very much a technique that you'll have to sort of practice and learn by feel, but once you get it, you'll find it's really versatile for painting stuff like this. So I'm gonna tackle the hair next, um, and this is gonna be done kind of panel by panel. I'm going to pick where natural panel lines are um, in the hair, depending on where the model's been joined and that sort of thing. And I'll do it section by section, because if you put all the contrast on at once and start applying the medium, often for large areas, some bits can be dry before you've got to it, and then it doesn't work very well. So doing it panel by panel is definitely the best way. Need a bit more there. So that's our first hair panel, so now we're going to do the opposite side, exactly the same. Just 
making sure once we apply the contrast medium that we are paying attention to the areas which are highlighted through the pre-shade and focusing on those more than the shadowed areas so we get that natural blend. Just gonna try and work a little bit more on beard there whilst it's still still wet enough to move. Looks like it's coming together pretty well. Just gonna move around and do the back of the hair. It looks like I'm taking it all off there, but uh, when you see the finished result, you'll realize how effective that actually is. And it does stain, um, it does stain more than you think when you're applying the medium. Gonna take a little bit more off the top there. That's just where the uh, the model joins. So there's like an unnatural recess there, which I just want to clean up. I wasn't quite happy with the beard, so I'm just taking a little bit more. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, I'm now going to leave that to one side to dry, um, and then when I come back, we're going to attack the robes with uh, contrast skeleton horde. Um, and you'll see how quickly it comes together once we start applying that. So, see you in a minute. Okay, that's now dry. So now we're going to move on and do those robes. So as I said, this is using Skeleton Horde, uh, which I found is a really, really nice colour for doing things like, uh, well, like this, like kind of slightly off-white robes. So exactly the same technique, uh, and as there's a lot of surface area to cover here, we are going to go panel by panel. And that's really important uh, so that we don't let the contrast dry and then it becomes difficult to move. So I'm going to start on this panel down here. This is where the pre-shader really helps us out and basically does half the work for you here. Uh, it shows you exactly where you need to pull away contrast paint and uh, 
as I'll show you when we get to it exactly where you need to put extra highlights if you want to push the contrast even further. So now we're going to start wicking away the skeleton horde. I wasn't sure what colour his foot was supposed to be, so I decided to do who's going to have white uh, sandals or shoes or something to match the, uh, the cloaks and robes, so we're going to do that same colour. Now I'll move on to these middle panels. We'll paint the reins uh, down the line, probably a different colour. Again, try and be neat here, but things like the, uh, the reins and straps there, if you get a bit of this on there, it's not the end of the world, I'm sure we'll paint it a darker colour later, so it should go straight over the top. And as these panels are small and close together, I'm going to do them both at the same time. And this is quite a centrally bright area, uh, I'm going to work away quite a bit of this now. So that it looks more white and less uh, kind of bone colour. Okay, that's starting to look okay. Right, so I'm going to just do a little bit more just on the central bit that's catching the light. Right. So hopefully you get the idea. I'm going to go around and finish the rest of the robes uh, and then we'll be back to do the next bit. Right, that's now dry. As you can see, that's quite effective. Um, we are going to push the highlights, even though you can leave it there. Um, but right now, as you can see, we're gonna paint the staff. So that is using Contrast Black Templar. Same technique, you do have to be a little bit more careful with Black Templar though, uh, because if you overload it with the medium too much, then what you end up with is this strange kind of washed out gray blue. Um, so uh, less is more when you're using this technique on Black Templar. And then you have the really, really dark contrast paints. So here we go, we're going to apply our medium. Let 
looks quite stark at this stage, but uh, when it dries, it will look okay. And we're going to repaint the orb in the centre of the staff later, but for now we're just doing the main staff colour. And I probably will dry brush a metallic over this towards the end anyway, um, just to give it that sort of metallic sheen. Okay, let's get in there now. Right, I think I'll go and finish that off uh, and then we'll come back and we'll look at the next step. Okay, now that's dry. We're now going to highlight the top edge of all the cloak folds with uh, a little bit of Vallejo white. This is a very much an optional step. You don't need to do this. The effect sort of speaks for itself, but I think it's worth doing it to... Um, just to push that contrast a bit more, just make it look a bit a bit nicer. So I'm gonna do that. So we're literally just highlighting those hard edges all the way around the cloak. And we'll also do um, the hard edges on the hair as well where the light's catching and probably the end of the beard. There you go, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go around and finish the rest of these highlights and then I'll come back in a minute and we'll carry on with the next step. Right, that's all dry. All those edge highlights are done and now you can see, I think, how much that actually adds to the contrast and makes it pop out. Um, like I say, it's an optional step, but I think it's worth adding it. Um, just adds a little bit more, especially for a character model or centerpiece like Saruman would be. Um, but now we're going to move on to the face and the hands. Um, this is just adding a little bit of uh, more of a fleshy tone in to bring more in line with the first Saruman that I painted, uh, in which I did this. And for this, we're going to be using uh, Citadel's Kisler Flesh. Uh, and this is just literally going to be uh, thinned out, almost like a glaze, just to add a little bit more of a flesh tone into the shadows and the highlights that we've got there. I'm going to start with the hands. Doesn't show up too well on the camera here, the difference is a little bit washed out, um, but in the final model, I will hopefully be able to see that.
I should say much like the um, highlights of the cloak. This is an optional step, but I think it's worth doing to add a bit more tone. Now I'm going to add a final highlight just by adding a little bit of white into the Kislev flesh just for the highest point of the light source. I think now we're pretty much done with Saren. Um, the basilicum grey we can use to go into the folds of the cloak there just for um, further shadow for any areas that you think might need it. But that's pretty close. Okay, that's basically it, I think. Um, you can see pretty much matches my original sermon. I think I'll now go in and do some details, uh, paint the horse in the same method as we've used here, different contrast paints obviously, um, and I'll do the base uh, and then I'll come back and show you the finished model um, and then that will probably be it. Welcome back, and as you can see, Sarum and the White is now finished. So the uh, base was done with a mixture of Vallejo texture paste and um, a basic material from Luke's APS. Uh, oh, the Git Gaming they are now, sorry. I think that was the uh, New Zealand, New Zealand ground. Um, the horse uh, was painted the same way as we did Saruman, but the gore grunts of fur for the, uh, for the skin, and I think it was wild wood for the hair with a highlight with then dryad bark. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Uh, please, if you try this method, share it on all our socials. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and let me know what the next Middle Earth tutorial is you'd like to see. Thanks.